Future Craig, get out of here. I gotta do a video. All right. Okay, good. So, can time travel really happen? I mean, aside from that fictional time travel, it's not really fictional, but fictional. It'd be pretty cool, right? You could see some crazy future technology or Armageddon, not the movie, although you could watch the movie, but don't, you're in the future. Go see future stuff. Or you could go to great moments in history and possibly change them. While most people will just briefly consider these possibilities, there's a guy who took it a little further. Actually, he devoted his entire life to studying science and eventually becoming a professor and theoretical physicist, all with the ultimate goal of building a time machine. Why did Ron Mallet devote his life to this? Well, well it was very, very personal. I was the oldest of uh, 10 children and I grew up in the Bronx. My father was a television repairman. For me, it was like he was uh, Superman. He was immortal. I thought that uh, he was just the center of everything. My mother knew, I'm sure, but we didn't know as children was that he had a very weak heart and he died suddenly of a massive heart attack when he was only 30 years old. It shattered my world. And I went from being a rather happy kid to being very depressed. And about a year after he died, when I was 11, I came across H.G. Uh, Wells' The Time Machine. It, it changed my life. It, it was the thing that gave me an anchor, because I thought if I could build a time machine, then I could go back and see him again and tell him what was going to happen and maybe save his life. Ron knew this sounded crazy, so he kept it secret. When I was being interviewed at the University of Connecticut, I mean, you can imagine, and I said, you know, I want to build a time machine. We wouldn't be talking right now. <laughs> so you have to rise through the ranks before you can uh, be a little crazy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That, and it's safe to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I really wanted to know how Ron's time machine would work. But it turns out, in order to understand that, I have to understand two Einstein theories. The special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. And he tried to explain them to me. And I, I think I get it. One of the things Einstein showed in his special theory of relativity is, is that, that time for a moving clock slows down. Your heart is a clock. This means that if you were traveling fast enough, your heart rate would slow down. You would actually age less than other people. You've probably heard this before, right? An astronaut goes super fast through space and him hours pass, but he comes back and years passed on Earth. Well, it turns out that's not science fiction. In fact, in 1971, an experiment was done. What they did was take one atomic clock and leave it at the Naval Observatory stationary. They put the other atomic clock on board an ordinary passenger jet and flew it around the world close to the speed of sound. When they brought the plane back, they found that the clocks on it had actually slowed down just the amount that Einstein had predicted. This is a phenomenon that has been proven many times. In fact, in the Large Hadron Collider, when particles are sped up close to the speed of light, they live 20 to 30 times longer than they would have. Okay, so Einstein's special theory of relativity says that speed affects time, but what about that other theory? Give me some general relativity, Ron. In the general theory of relativity, Einstein said that gravity affects time. What? Okay, so it turns out the closer you are to a center of gravity, that is the gravitational pull is stronger, time will slow down. And we have real world evidence of this. The G GPS system. Thanks Ron, that's what I was gonna say. Time for a GPS satellite is going faster than time for your car down here on Earth. In fact, so they actually have to use computers to adjust and to take into account that difference. This is called gravitational time dilation. I like to call it gravitan. Gravitan. Grava, grava, gravitan. Don't call it that. And it's especially a big deal when you think of the massive gravitational pull of black holes. Say a dude or dudette was approaching a black hole and you were an outside observer watching, stalker. To them, time's moving normally. To you, their heart rate is slowing down, everything's slowing down. In fact, time is coming very close to a halt. And then when that dude left the black hole and went back to you or to a lawyer to get a restraining order so you'd stop stalking them, they would be centuries into the future. So that's how you can travel into the future. But what about traveling into the past? That's what Ron wants to do. Again, he turns to what Einstein says about gravity. Now, in Newton's theory, the only thing that can create gravity is matter, period. But in Einstein's theory, light can create gravity. And that is where the core of my inspiration came in. If gravity can affect time and light can create gravity, then light can affect time. Particularly, Ron theorizes that if you make a circular pattern of light in a certain way, you can twist space and time. And it turns out there is a device that creates that circular pattern he's looking for. It's called a ring laser. And this ring laser is actually a, a, a device that's used for uh, gyroscopes. Why don't you hit me up with an analogy, Ron? Suppose you had a cup of coffee. Think of the coffee in the cup as being like empty space. Very good. <laughs> and you take your spoon and you stir the coffee. The coffee starts swirling around as you stir it. So as you take the circulating light beam, it actually causes the empty space to start swirling around. So by twisting space, I can twist time. And by twisting time, 
I can travel back into the past. If there is going to be like a closed time loop, that would really kind of only exist within the space of the device. You're absolutely right, and that's important. Everyone is actually has their own private space and time. The only reason why we seem like we're all in sync is that we're all moving so slow compared to the speed of light with everyone else. And that is, in fact, what allows the possibility of time travel. So it's like we're, we're each occupying our own timeline. Or, yeah, yeah. our own universe. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our own space time universe. That's exactly right. Mind blown. It's just a matter of doing the experiment now. What proof have you shown, or what progress have you made with this experiment? What is holding things up experimentally is money. The startup cost to do a feasibility study is a quarter of a million dollars. Do you think that's gonna happen in your lifetime? I'd like to think that in my lifetime, I'll be able to see the beginning. The energies that are involved for the twisting of space, and I need to be very honest about that, are not all that great. But the energies that are involved in the twisting of time are unbelievable. Think of something like the Manhattan Project. If there had not been the Second World War, we still may not have atomic power. I'm just gonna be, you know, throw this out there. If the CIA found out that uh, North Korea was investing time in a time machine, I would find that I had more money than I could even think of. <laughs> Are you a super villain? Are you, uh, I hope you don't, you don't instigate any of this. Uh, <laughs> no. No, I would not. So we talked a lot longer about time travel with Ron because we are time travel geeks. We got it into paradoxes, quantum theory, multiple universes, but we'll save that for another video in the future. Then Sam asks, You're sitting there watching like Back to the Future, you ever like, wow, I'm a theoretical physicist and I'm working on time travel. This is awesome. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> you know, I, I see these science fiction movies, these time travel movies, and I'm thinking, wow, I mean, I actually have figured out how it can be done. You know? <laughs> and, and to me, that's, uh, yeah, it's a kick. Uh, I want to inspire people with my story as well as, uh, you know, try to make them feel like this is an incredible universe. And we're just beginning to understand just how incredible it is. Thanks, Ron. One way he's helping us understand is with a book he wrote. It's called Time Traveler, a scientist's personal mission to make time travel a reality. It's available now, link in the doobly-doo. Up next, Ryan gets real deep into what time actually is. Such a deep dude. That's what we call him around here. Deep Dude Ryan. But this is the first time anyone has ever referred to him as Deep Dude Ryan, and hopefully the last.